<laughs> going to do his job. But um, uh, I'll also thanks to the other officers, Peter Norton, Tony Marchantano, John Paul, Jeff Google, Mary Tubney. Sorry, here today. Uh, Mark Legba. All our volunteers want to uh, make some announcements, and there are other people that want to make some announcements. Uh, the Python Workshop, which meets every other Tuesday at the Hudson Library, uh, 66 Leroy Street, West Village, is going strong. Uh, how many people here have been to the Python Workshop? Okay, people. Um, 6 to 8 o'clock next meeting is April 1st, next Tuesday. So uh, we're hoping to have lots of XO, XO, uh, XO laptops. So please do that. Anybody else have any announcements? Uh, hey, there, there's uh, one thing that I've gotten uh, um, as a subscriber to Boing Boing. I've gotten a mailing list uh, newsletter today. Um, Friday, March 28th, um, through um, the NYU and Columbia University, will be a Creative Commons scavenger hunt. They are looking for people to come in with cameras to take pictures around New York City for the Wikipedia article for the city. Um, as I said, March 24th is the date. There's April 4th as a rain date. Um, I believe you can probably get more information if you log on to Boing Boing. The article should be up there, and you can read it and you can see more about it. Excellent. Very good. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'm the Dyke from Reddit Town. I'm the founder of Reddit Town. I'm the founder of Reddit Town. I'm the founder of Reddit Town. So if anybody particularly interested in the Python, I'm the founder of Reddit Town. I'm the founder of Reddit Town. I'm the founder of Reddit Town. And if David Chris is here. Yep. <laughs> All right, cool. So, people out of town. Yes. Um, the uh, the Linux meetup is uh, the third Thursday of every month, and they meet at uh, Think Copy, um, which is uh, near Washington Square. A um, little different than this. Uh, obviously, uh, both who don't want to have any duplication, so it's more of just a uh, get together where people can share information um, instead of presentations. All right, so the Linux meetup. And speaking of meeting up after this meeting, uh, we'll go to about 8 o'clock. And then we do need to leave at 8. Uh, we want to try and get out of here exactly at 8. So if you have conversations, please bring them to the Stompfish, which is the TGI Fridays, two blocks away, on like 6 and 56, where everybody can hook up and talk and um, get a chance to get some food. So we encourage you to please carry the conversations to the joint afterwards. Um, please uh, feel free to subscribe to our mailing list, and I'd like to announce. You get uh, announcements of open source events and our meetings, one way list on the website, or Nyla Talk, an interactive list. Uh, there's Nyla Workshop, there's Nyla Social, Nyla Volunteers. So take a look um, and see if any of those mailing lists appeal to you. Also join the IRC channel, which is pretty active on Freenode at Pound Nyla. Um, without further ado, let me uh, introduce our speaker, who is going to give a talk tonight on. Multimedia production, internet TV production, using free software, open source tools, essentially creating an entirely free infrastructure for doing television, audio, all the things that we thought were completely in the domain of uh, proprietary or the Mac, uh, can be done using Linux and other uh, open source tools. And I uh, feel very good about our speaker because I know that he really puts his stuff. He uh, really drills down. I've learned an enormous amount from him over the years. He's a longtime uh, member of the group, and I like an active participant. Uh, let's please give a warm welcome to Nyla. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, you might remember me from a year ago, a presentation on PC Linux OS over at the Google building. Uh, a lot of people uh, gave me some good press about that, and I appreciate it. And, um, some people are running PC Linux OS. It's to the point where uh, it's the number one most downloaded disk image on the web today. It surpassed and moved to, I think, in April of last year or something. So that's pretty impressive in and of itself. So let's get on with this. Okay. Like you kind of said, you thought it was all Mac and proprietary software. Yes, yes. It's not. It's free, it's open, and it's doable. Okay, the main thing here is to have maximum usefulness at zero cost and keeping the long term infrastructure flexible, best uptime. Well, uptime, I don't know. But 
It is possible. This is the beginning of the presentation here. Voice over IP. Anybody here doesn't know what that is? Okay, that is, that's right. Whiteboard? Everybody got that? Okay, collaborative scripting. Now, we're not talking about scripting as far as Dash or Python or Perl. We're talking about writing a script for a TV program. Okay? Or some type of program. Okay? Uh, secure file sharing, secure instant messaging and chat, online sharing of calendaring, shared email account, either the bulletin board and transfer information around, and free online storage and more. Okay? So, Skype, I think you might have heard of this. There's another one also called Gizmo, but this works everywhere, so uh, this is the deal. You can actually talk with five people simultaneously. And uh, that's with the 1.4 version. The new version coming out, and we can talk to nine people simultaneously. And that's the 2.0 version. Okay, yes. You wrote that it's open source? Is it actually open source? Okay. Right. Well, Giz Gizmo is open source, so you can use Gizmo or Skype. The protocol is supported by the open source. Right. Right. No, no, no. Skype uses a proprietary protocol. I think they deliberately avoid it. Okay, but please, Linux client, Windows client, Mac client. So it's everywhere. This is everywhere. It's ubiquitous, <coughs> and you can all talk to each other, and that's what we're looking at. Okay, you could probably do the same thing with Gizmo, but you might have to do some porting and all that kind of stuff. So that gets a little daunting for users. And some of the people who are doing video production, that's a killer. So Skype is really the way to go. Okay, move on. Okay, Skype Linux. Okay, totally works, right? Uh, and 2.0 is out too. But that's in beta, so 1.4 you can talk to five people, and that's usually enough. If you're talking with nine people at once, it gets kind of confusing. So, <laughs> a little over there. Okay, um, yeah. Any questions? I think I have kind of a question on the previous, okay. the previous slide. Yeah. You said that PC Linux OS is the number one distributed disk image and right. it's the number one. Yeah. Um, why haven't, why, why isn't, they don't have a, a client to put on Skype when they have all the other ones? Um, I really don't know why, but if you download the Skype client, it works. Okay, I just wanted because I know they had all the other clients. Yeah, it's not the repository, but it does work. They use the APK repository, so. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 oh wait. You see Linux on No, this is going to be No, it's a menu. It's based on menu. Okay, SKRBL, this is not open source, but, okay, read the slide. Web based whiteboard, all you do is paste the URL, cut and paste, and you send it to your collaborators, and you can be on the same page together and draw your little bits of work. Okay, here it is. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people don't know this even exists. Okay, there's tools in here for creating shapes and text and all that. So you bring up your Skype. You bring up SKRBL, now you have voice and whiteboard, you can start collaborating on say, you know, laying out, you know, your set, where your lighting is going to be, where your, you know, say you're doing a talk show, your desk is going to be somewhere, your lighting is going to be somewhere, you know, your camera is going to be somewhere. This is a great tool. This is what you need. This is how you lay all that stuff out. And you can give everybody a different color, so everybody can do their own thing. And all you got to do is just cut and paste the URL, and some email, send it to your friends, call them up, say it's in your email, boom, you're on the same page. Okay? Brainstorming, meeting notes, report, open boards. That's just the tip of the iceberg. You can do a lot with this. Okay, it's not open source, but it's totally free. It's very handy. Very, very handy. This will take you a long way. Okay. This is another piece of software. This is open source. Okay. Celtex. It's a free web-based script writing tool, not programming like I said before. 
you know, screenplay, movies, TV production, even reality shows. It's not reality, it's semi-reality. It's somewhat scripted, you know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In the home page, basically you download the software, you create an account with them, and then you get on their server, and you do a lot. Okay. The international, if you look on the bottom, it's in multiple languages, film, theater, radio, audio, and source. And it's open. And it's cross platform? Yes, it is. There's clients for everything. Back with the Okay, so an idea to the editor because you know each editor is going to be a little different. You know, if you're doing a film production, you're going to have different choices. If you're doing theater, you know, you're not worried so much about camera angles. You're worried about props and backdrops and all that kind of stuff. If you're doing a documentary or advertising or music video, yes, your choices are going to change. So choose your editor carefully. I mean, not that you can change it later, but it's up. They give you like an index card thing, which is very old school, but still works. Okay, collaborate with others. This is what we were talking about the whole time. Okay, produce a breakdown. Okay, storyboarding. Now, if you can draw, this is great. But if you can't, just totally ignore the storyboarding because that gets a little involved. It's very handy, but it's time consuming. Scheduling the production. This is one of the best features of the whole thing. You can schedule meetings, shooting days, uh, all that kind of stuff. Okay? And since it works in every client, this is a really good problem. Okay, uh, secure web services. You can back your stuff up. All that. Really, really, this is a very powerful tool. Is there a charge for the web services? No. No, we yeah, have wow. Exactly. Yes. When I downloaded it and started playing with it, I was like, they ain't charging nothing? Where did they make the money? I have no idea. I, I suspect that some videos that some some of the movies and stuff like that are probably helping to fund this because I was at a multimedia breakfast a couple months ago and a guy from, I believe it was NBC or CBS was there, and he was saying one of the main things they love about the web is that this is how they find talent. Because if people put out good stuff on the web, they're going to put out good TV shows and there's always been a show of talent okay. in Hollywood. It's kind of yeah, there's some terrible programming out there, so they're always looking for talent, so they're more than willing to fund something. Do you have to use the web service? I mean, no. Oh, no, no, it's a standalone client. It'll work on its own. But, um... Can you set up your own web service for it, or...? Uh, that I don't know about. I don't know if you can run it as your own web service. But since it's open, sur open source, it's quite possible you could probably do a hack on that and get it going. Okay. Yes. There's an interface, you know, with uh, the script writing pro, whatever that other program is that all people buy. Oh, I have no idea. I have no idea. That's not what this is about. This is not about buying stuff. This is about doing So, uh, we'll talk about that at the end of the Conflict that overlaps. What? Conflict that overlaps. And as far as... Script writing pro and... and it's quite part. possible. It's quite possible. Because it, but this does more, a lot more. I don't think script writing pro does the storyboards or the sharing or any of that. Oh, okay. Thank you for the information. Thank you. Uh, if anybody has some information to throw out like that, feel free. Okay. This is a program called the Source Board. Okay. Source Board got that. For RetroShare, Linux and Windows, Mac client, I don't know, but it's open source and you're probably going to go over. It says there's an install on Mac client. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Apple. Yeah. Apple can see Mac client or not? It's a It's a Oh, like I said. Okay, here's the home page. Okay, first platform private peer-to-peer -peer sharing. Let's create secure securely with your friends. Trust with trust on the web. Encryption, chat, file sharing, messaging, channels. Okay? So when you want to have that meeting and you have Skype going and you've got your SKRBL up, you can use this and say, oh, send me that file. Boom, here you go. 
oh, you know, there's some chat going on the bottom, so you can kind of be talking and chatting at the same time. This is a great tool. There used to be a tool that plugged into <coughs> Firefox for little peers, but that just shut down. And, you know, maybe one of these days they'll make it open to us. But they haven't done. So this is the way to go. Okay. Get a dev file. Get an exe. Get a QGZ file. <laughs> What's the difference between doing this and then or, or uh, sending a file over uh, some instant message client? Okay, instant message clients and email usually have size limitations. This doesn't. Uh, it's very slow. It's very slow as well. Yeah. Right, like this is a little bit more robust. Okay. okay, now there's a problem. We have a dev file, no RPM file. Okay, which is really not a big deal. You run alien on your system, which is most of the system, you, know, you go to Synaptic, you load it up, and you can convert from dev to RPM. And that's what I did on my system, and it works fine. You go to terminal, type SU, there's an Ubuntu. Right, that's a dev file. Right. <coughs> you want RPM, and your password is root, change your registry to the file you want to convert, alien dashr file, convert dot dev, and you end up with an RPM file. And this will work on Red Hat, PC Linux OS, Vendriva, but any RPM based system. Okay? What? They're using them now. Yeah, this is very handy because you can use this over and over and over again. There's a lot of dev stuff that's not available in RPM. Is that like Slack or Yeah, you can convert to Slack which are yeah. MP packages, Slack layer. The yeah, alien has all that pre dimension. I do too. You can use uh IT as well. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, this is a little bit more heavy duty. This is also open source for it, for waste networking. Okay. Um, the only problem with this is this is not, I wouldn't call it a true peer to peer client. It's more like a server based kind of thing. Okay, so if you have a static IP address, it works wonderful. If you don't, and you have dynamic DNS, then you have to work with a DNS forwarding service. Wait, 32 bit Windows, Linux, FreeBSD, Mac, OS, everything. Similar kind of thing. It's the messaging, chat, browsing, file transfer, encryption. A little more heavy duty. But um, so many people here might like using this, but the other one's a little bit easier. Okay? Okay. Uh, it's private, secure, big key, messaging. Uh, this works pretty good. I've seen some boards with people love this thing. Okay. Cable and DSL modems. Okay, if you got a cable modem or a DSL modem, and you reboot, you can get a different IP address. This can be a problem. But you go to Dyn DNS or there's a number of other services that do DNS forwarding and it's not as much of a problem. Okay. I prefer the DD client, which is written in Perl. Paper. No. no, it's free. Also free. It yeah. comes out free, then they start getting. If you if you want something a little bit more heavy duty, yeah, you pay, but it's not a lot. It's like ten or fifteen dollars a year. It's not very expensive. Then you see the homepage. Yes, there's a, there's also a C client right here. It's called In In a Dying. It's written in C. Also cross platform, they're both your clients, it's just I find a problem with it. It's sometimes more than the one I've had doesn't work very well. Yeah, it varies. Like you can go into your routes and fix the machine the fan. There's Yeah, you gotta you gotta figure out what port, what virtual port you're gonna use. Yeah, it just tells it all. I'm saying if you go into your router, mm -hmm. some routers, um, like a, I think uh, I had a net here one, you can go in and it'll let you register the router when the router gets a new IP. Using your Dyn DNS yes. 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 However, yes. I found somewhat unreliable depending on the router. Right. So that's way better. Make sure yeah. you make sure the client works okay. Yeah, my my uh, my uh, my Linux one has that. Okay. But I back it up. Yeah. Yeah. Make yeah. sure yeah. this client's running so this way it will always work for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Dyn DNS, the configuration, a little daunting, but it takes a little practice to get. Now, next drive. Anybody hear this? Yeah. Okay. All right. 
with five gigs of free space, the more friends you got, the more spaces you share. Basically what it is. Because you can do it public, you can do it private. So you do it private, you share your space. This way you have files that you always need. You put it up on X Drive, and boom, you got it. The only thing is you need an AOL account that's free. <coughs> and that's your login. It's your AOL account. When was that need to get AOL? That was about two years ago. Okay. About two years ago, yeah. I think AOL is intertwined with these people who bought them. I have no idea. Okay. I haven't done it that. <laughs> but again, this is nice because there's no file size limitation. I mean, of course, up to five gigs. Yeah. You know, most of us don't have to put five gig files, fortunately. So that's okay. Um, email systems, chat systems, <coughs> they have problems with their files. Um, that's why uh, this is great. And this is for more if you want to persistently put something up. The other one is file, transfer, peer to peer. And that's from one person to another. So it's slightly different uh, implementation for both. Sign up, get your get your AOL free. It's a little slow, but it works. Okay. It's pretty reliable. I've used it for about four or five years before you did the AOL and then it's using the AOL on it and I got one extra too, so it doesn't want to do it. It's more for identification than screen Okay, you may have heard of these things. Google Calendar, Google Docs, Word Process and Spreadsheets. Picasso, Google Translate, Gmail. Now, Google Translate. This is going to come up again later, so remember that one. But, yes. But the Google, I mean, Google Documents is not very good because only, you can only say maximum five, twelve kilobytes. Yeah, right. It's sunk. All right. It's kind of went over, because you couldn't save it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's why you want to. Use something like X Drive or peer to peer sharing, since we can make any kind of size file you want, share it amongst other people. Okay, this is really, it's limited, but it's there for you. Okay, it's available if you need it, it's usable. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm only touching the bottom. Okay, next one. The Google Docs, and even talking about this. So the Google Calendar is more, the less slide is Google Calendar. That's more useful because you can share the calendar with everybody. Yes? What about using uh, version control systems? Um, that's really more designed for programming. It, it could be used, sure. Sure, absolutely. There's several other uh, solutions, like, for instance, like Second Life. Second Life is Mac, Windows, Linux, but it chews up bandwidth like crazy, and they just came out with the voice module, and, you know, I really would recommend it. <laughs> production pictures or what you're doing, this is fantastic. This is one of the best things going. You know, you can store pictures, you know, uh, still shots from these days production, put it up here, and this will work for everybody. Okay? Make a product. What? Make a product. Uh, I'd like to tell you. Yes, 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 yes. Isn't it just PC only? Picasso no. Picasso no. Well, there's no, a web based. There is a desktop client which is um, cross platform, but the Linux version is actually the Windows version running online. Right. Something. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Something like that. It hasn't been a native Linux version yet. 
because I, know, I noticed like when I, I ran Picasa on my machine, I don't remember it running wide, so I thought it was a good one. It's probably a component to this. I did a PSAX, PSAX when I ran it, and it shows one running. Okay, let me go back to this. Okay, uh, uh, okay, this. This is very important. Google Translate. Okay, most translation stuff that's on the web, you can only translate maybe a sentence or two. This you can translate large bulk text or whole websites. Okay? And I tested this out. My wife is Chinese. And we tried it in Chinese. It does a pretty damn good job. Wow. So, which is very hard. Yeah. Which is very hard. So you battle fish. Yeah, battle fish is kind of funky thing. This yeah. really, this really works. Yeah. yeah. Battle yeah. fish is all just exact. Okay. Now, if anybody knows anything about China, they have the world's largest population. So, if you want video production, these are the people you want to push it out to. Because even if you get a small segment in the market, it's a lot of numbers. Okay. Um, with Chinese also, it's all written the same. So if somebody speaks Cantonese or some other dialect, when they're looking at the subtitles, it's all the same. Okay? So they don't have, you don't have to worry about dialects and all that kind of stuff. Okay? It's spoken differently, it's all written the same. Okay? Now, Gene email, email. Everybody knows the email stop, so I'm moving on. From the camera to the hard drive. All right. I have a Sony Handycam right back there. Not very expensive. It's got a great lens by Carl Zeiss. Okay. What you want to do is make sure that your Kino client, which runs DV Grab underneath it, is set to DV Now. Okay. If you set it for something else, your audio and video sync ain't going to be right. You know what? We don't have PAL here. You know what? Don't worry about it. Because you're going to transcode it to something else later anyway. As long as you get your sync right, you're in. Okay? That's what I found out. This is from experience. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, send us an email, though. Okay? Uh, Firewire looks like USB, but it's got a rounded end on the end. Uh, Firewire also is called 1394. Uh, that's the technical standard. Firewire is the uh, Apple name. Yeah. And on the Sony, it's called iLink. It's all the same. Okay? And uh, removing the video and the audio and all that does it good. Okay? And the Okay? Uh, then you click the capture button, it'll change the screen. Once you hit the record button, it talks to the camera, turns the camera on, and it syncs and starts recording. Okay, it outputs in raw DB, raw digital video. Okay, <coughs> uh, Do you have any recommendations for file systems? Uh, for file systems? Uh, for storing uh, large video. Uh, well, I'm using extension 3. It seems to work fine. Uh, I've done it under, under NTFS. That seems to work fine. You know, uh, that 32, I kind of leave alone. <laughs> right, exactly. Yes, there's an interesting article from uh, TV about file systems that are good for large files. Okay. Editing your video. There are several video game programs in the open source world. If they're off, but I think he's talking. Start with K Live. Okay? You need special effects like blue screen, green screen, which is actually called Chrome. Okay? You can use Cinderella. But the learning curve can be a little daunting. Like a lot of uh, closed source programs, there's menus on top of menus on top of menus. And can, it, it, there's a learning curve. It takes your time. K Live, I'm going to get into this later. In about 10 minutes, you'll be able to edit the video. Okay, see on the top there it says project. Okay, you're going to click that. It says add to project. 
can be edited files for project, which would be those DB files that Tino downloaded to your hard drive. Okay? It's going to show up right here. Okay? You can have video files here. You can have audio files here. You can have still images, probably with text on top of it for your credits. Okay? All you're going to do is do is drag them down to the timelines here. Okay? If you have overlap, you middle click in between the timelines, you can create transitions. Does anybody here notice from one slide to the next what happens to the screen? Right, that's a transition for those people who don't know. Okay. Transitions could be a box in the middle that expands to the whole screen. It can be top to bottom. I mean, it's, you know, wipes, right, transition screens, whatever. Yeah, there's tons of them. Okay? Yeah, this gets over like exactly. star away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah whatever. Star away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. And then you can play your video over here so you can see what you're doing. Let me see what I have here. Okay. Okay, this is what we're talking about. Project menu, add the project. Okay. Drag to the timeline. We were talking about this a second ago. Now, here we go. Razor tool. Why do you think they call it Razor Tool? Because uh, years ago, when you had film, you actually had to take a physical razor and cut the, cut the scenes out. So we kept the name. <laughs> okay? Transition, we were talking about that a minute ago. Okay? There's a zoom button, so for your images and video, you can zoom into different sections and expand it and do all that free tin bar stuff that we see on documentaries that look like cool. Okay, that's all zoom. We're getting it. We're getting it. Okay, for your credits. Okay? The easiest way of doing your credits is with GIMP. GNU Image Manipulation Program. Okay? What you do is you grab an image or create an image. You use GIMP Text Tool and put your text on top of it. And then all you do is drag it down to your timeline, set your duration, you know, say 10 seconds and apply for somebody to see the stuff. There you go. Got your credits. How would you do um, yes. scrolling? Scrolling, that's, really, really that, really that's, that's something you want to go into Cinderella for. It gets uh -huh. daunting and time consuming. I'm talking about quick and dirty okay. and getting the job done. Okay? I'm talking about making it easy. Not, you know, we're talking about putting stuff up on the web. We're not talking about a uh, feature film. Okay? <laughs> Although, <coughs> if you learn Cinderella, yeah, you can do a feature film. Because you have green screen, blue screen, scrolling tool. <coughs> I mean, everything that's in a commercial product is in Cinema. Okay, but the learning curve is steep. So, this is way more stock. Steep and final time. Uh, it's on the same level. It's on a similar level. Okay, GIF 2.4, that's what's out. Mac, Windows, Linux, ports, ports, ports. Every language you can imagine. Zip. Okay, this is a whole other meeting with it. And I'm not going with it. Okay, audio. Music for your credits or background music for scenes. Audacity. Okay, this was talked about in a previous Linux meeting. Run by Sunny. Sunny today. Okay. Now, basically, you drag audio into it, it automatically creates a WAV file. From there, you're going to do a similar thing. You're going to cut it, whatever you need, and then you're going to drag it down, you know, you're going to put it into your project. Drag it down to your timeline, set your duration. Okay? This way your credits have some sound on top of it, or if you have a tender scene where two people are kissing, you want some background music, it's basically the same procedure that using for credits. Okay? It's not a big difference. Uh, it's all drag and drop. It's really pretty simple. Okay. Audacity. You can do some very complicated stuff with this, or you can do some very simple stuff. It's up to you. Um, there's a lot of music mashup on the web today. We're going to take old music, new music, pushing it together, creating all kinds of stuff. This is what they're using, basically. Okay? Uh, the output away file, then they'll use a converter and make it back into an MP3. And you hear your mashup. That's all of you do. Yes, just to mention that I'll see also PD option, let's go to MP3 and board as well. Yes, 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 yes. But you got to make sure you have the codex in your system. Especially for MP3, Warbus is already included. Warbus is open source, that's why. Why do you, yeah, the, why do you have to download the libline separately? Because they don't have to do that one. Right. 
off your website, whatever, whatever you're doing. Okay? That's uh, DVD standard is basically what? MPEG2 with MP3 audio on it? Yeah. Okay. Or ACP yeah. audio. ACP audio. I was just saying one more thing about it before. All of everything to read it. Right. It's very ubiquitous. Well, every format can be. Yes, it's bad. H.264. That's not the video code. Yeah, it's a different video code. Yes. Apple uses it. Yeah, that's an Apple standard. Right, right. Is there, yeah, anything, that's a to yes. is there anything to uh, help with the Blu-ray yet? Uh, Blu-ray is high def, and believe it or not, in life, it will out in HD. Okay. Now the codec to convert from HD to exactly what Blu-ray is using, right. that's a little over my head because I'm doing basically internet TV production, and that's MP4 most of the time. Okay. So. That's a whole other oh, meeting. Yeah, yeah. What about Divex? It's a codec. <coughs> it's not a codec. Uh, yeah, there's some sites that are streaming Divex. Sure, sure. It's, it's a good codec, and it's available under Linux, Mac, Windows, and Windows. There's a free alternative called Xpin. Xpin, right. Xpin's very good. Xpin? Yes, in fact. Is there any kind of standard for saving pro video projects in general, some kind of open standard. I'm thinking 10 years down the line, if I want to open this project, and KDN Live doesn't exist anymore. Well, well considering it's open point. source, it probably will exist. It might be a little different. But the KDN Live output is basically XML, so which is a standard, which so you will be able to read it. You will be able to read it. Any other? OK, in the back there, yeah. Is there any team that will do something like Flash in terms of make SWF for vector animation? Um, hey, that Flash. Nash is open source. Yeah, Nash, but that's like a player. There is also there is a creation program. You can't make animation in the free software. No, there is an open source creation program for creating Flash projects. I can't think of the name right now. Because, you know, and they'll be announced in a while in the future. Well, at some point they were trying to make SVT into an animated yeah. format. Yeah. Uh, 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 Ming? What? Oh, Ming. 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 That's it. Ming. What? There's a program called Ming. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. And this is why these meetings are great because yeah. we have cumulative brain power. <laughs> okay. If I can answer it later, somebody in here can. Yes. <laughs> what if you want to create a screencast? Can you elaborate more? What do you exactly Istanbul. Oh, Istanbul? Istanbul, Istanbul record by desktop. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's out there. That's in repositories, yeah. With Istanbul, the AUG encoder is so CPU intensive. If you're doing anything like slides or something, it gets all laggy. So use uh, XVidCap, which will just dump like, uh, it can dump JPEG or like straight MPEG, and it's much easier on uh, Right, just output to a different. To and it doesn't lag. XVidCap right. doesn't lag. AUG encoder can lag quite a bit. Right, right. Again, okay. a lot of experts in the room. These questions will be answered. Subtitle and remember is talking about Google Translate. Here we go. Subtitle and do your video, it's text and syncs it, creating SRT file, save separately. Some programs can view SRT files in sync with the video, some can't, but you know what? You can encode the SRT into the into the file directly. From the Google Translate, okay, you're going to translate, you're going to have audio, okay, then you're going to create your text in English, and then you can translate to whatever language you want using Google Translate, and you can encode it. And here it is, it's from a nice man from France, who wrote this lovely program. Okay, you've got your video over there, you got your, your uh, waveform over here. This is, it's, it's nice, it's helpful, but I rarely use it. Okay, it's mostly look at your video, make sure your text works with what your video is doing, and you know it's start time, stop time, length of time, and your text. Okay, because usually your scene stays up for a certain duration, and once you figure out that duration, which is not really very hard, because then you have the time running all the time. You just look at the time and say, oh, it's running from this time to that time. You put your text in, and it works really, it works really fast. Okay. 
you can actually email me who wrote this and ask for it. Yes? Well, the subtitles are saved into SRT files and then you later encode them into the video. So you're going to create a different video file for each separate language. Okay? It's a little time intensive, but it works. Okay. This is what you need, M encoder. Okay? It's just all nice for video encoding. They read the man page. Because there's a thing in there that tells you, use this command and it'll tell you what all your codecs are that you have available. Do it. <coughs> do it, do it, do it. See what you got. Okay? Add more. <laughs> more codecs, the better. Okay? You can test files later, you'll be able to bring anything to whatever you want. Okay? And there we are. Okay. Now, if you follow what's here, without going to the man page and learning what codecs you have, you're going to end up with a screen that's a little bit on the bedside. side. Okay? This is just a starting point. Okay? This is just where you begin. You're going to play with, with this here, these two. This here and this here. Okay? It's the audio and video. Okay? You're going to use a different codec than what's here and a little bit. Okay? But if you read the man page, you'll see you can change the codecs just by, it'll say use a different word combination and we're going to use a codec. That's it. Just play with the no, the colors are good, it's just you can never write that. You can never it's gonna be pink. But like you said, you do this first, you see what you got, work from there, read the band page. It's pretty easy. It's kinda like what's happening to start doing my video. That it works hard at it and some of the roots were incredibly bad. And Okay, all the programs are done. Well, SKRBL and somebody mentioned Skype, Skype was an open source either. Okay. But okay. So like I said, like I'm saying here, whiteboards exist, audio programs exist, like Skype, like like Gizmo for that matter. And it could probably all be run into FedraShare as one package and you get everything all at once. Okay? All these open source projects have very robust communities. They, they ain't going nowhere. They're only going to get better and better. But no, exactly. Okay. Okay, if you want more transitions in live before Google transitions, simple Google search, you'll find them. Graphic. Right. People are right now. It's like with GIMP. If you want different filters, do a Google search, you'll find them. Go to, go to GIMP.org. They have links like crazy to, to filter for them. Okay? Now, future. TV on the internet. Okay. Get Miro.com. Miro player is like TiVo. It uses BitTorrent for downloads and downloads come down pretty quick. There's long format stuff, there's short format, all kinds of stuff. It's not like YouTube. YouTube, 10 minutes, you're done. You want to you have an hour long talk show and you don't want to have to spend for the bandwidth to stream it to people? This is it. Get Miro. Okay, this is what you want to do. This is the future. You know how much this future is? Okay, everybody here heard of Firefox? Okay. Guess who's investing in Get Miro? Firefox, Mozilla. They're investing in Get Miro. Mirror uses the Mozilla Get Miro Right, exactly. Exactly. Right, yes. Is that a streaming video thing? What? Is on our streaming video? This is not streaming video, no. You say, I want this, I want that, I want that. You walk away, you go make some food, come back, you get your files, you play them, you copy them, you give them to your friends, whatever. Mm -hmm. This is why the RSS tags, this is what you're going to see. You're going to click the channel, okay, it's going to show you the RSS tag, which has a textual description of what the episode's about, with a link to the content, and a thumbnail. So it's a download manager? Yeah, it's basically a, a BitTorrent download manager for a channel-based system. Mm -hmm. Video podcast. Video podcast was like good. the predecessor to this. Was, this is a more advanced version of that. Now, you create a product, you put it up on Get Miro. What I'd say is this when you're shooting your video, do your segments, think five minutes, 
you can shoot phone format, but think in topics of about five minutes. So you can chop your stuff, put it on stuff like YouTube, iTunes, uh, Nifedia, etc., etc. And you can do your long format on Get Miro. Okay, so you shoot once, edit multiple ways. Okay, and the RSS tags are going to be needed for all of these networks. So you got to know that. Okay, and again, you got to think about licensing. Basically, for Internet TV, what most people are using is a Creative Commons license, where it's redistributable. Okay. But you can't change the point, you can't change the stuff, you can't use it for your own commercial uses. You retain all your commercial rights. Okay? But it's redistributable. Because this way you sell advertising in your video, and when it gets redistributed, other people see the advertising because it's still in there. Okay? Yes. Uh, I don't know if this is part of your. Okay, but you want to get uh -huh. into it, but uh, I've really been wondering about that Creative Commons because I read the license itself and it doesn't mention a whole lot about. Uh, it, it tells you what it grants you, but it doesn't tell you what it restricts you from. Okay, so Creative Commons is not one license. <coughs> Creative Commons is several licenses. Take a look at all of them, see what you, what you want to do. Okay, if you want to just put it out there and have people mix it up, there's a license for that. If you want to return to commercial, retain all your commercial rights, there's a license for that too. Okay, so it's not one license. So it's not like it's not like the TLP where it's like this is what it is. That's it. No, no, it's, it's sort of like it's this. This, this, and this. Take what you want. Pick what you want. So, so right. Right, exactly. Right. right, some of them you have to give attribution. Well, non commercial. Non commercial. Right. Pick the rights you want. Pick, pick the rights you want. Exactly. Pick the rights you want. You can look on the uh, Creative Commons site. You have all the licenses listed there. You can read them all. Unless the right. license. I read yeah. probably just the basics. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like, I think like it's four or five licenses. The Creative Commons site is basically uh, the brainchild of Lawrence Lessing. Okay. He's a brilliant attorney. He's an open source fan. And he thought long and hard about this stuff. And he's written some great licenses. Okay. Now. Big video, good script concept. Okay. You get your lighting right, you get your sound right, it's going to be great. If you don't get those two right, again, okay, it's going to look terrible. It's going to sound terrible. People are going to click away from your site, from your video, whatever, in a heartbeat. It's going to be amateur. If you get these things right, you got it. Okay? You can have an audience. Okay, most of all, have fun. Um, you were talking about, sorry, you were talking about, um, Distributing and then it being redistributed. Right. Is there any way to keep track? I mean, you're talking about advertising revenues. Right. How does the advertiser know? Okay. How many times? How many eyeballs are seeing it? Right. This is, down this is okay. Okay. This, uh, some of the sites that you put the stuff up on, like Mirror Player, you can run a tracker to track the BitTorrent downloads. That's one way. Uh, another way would be log files on the streaming mm -hmm. places, but you gotta work with the people to have access to those files. Uh, it's really about, you know, who you work with, okay? There's tons of sites with TV, LinkX, Wikipedia. I mean, this, this site's popping up every day. If it's it's really redistributable, then somebody just posts on their own website and it can be viewed a thousand times and your advertisers don't know. We'll never know about it, right? You'd have to basically find it and kind of gauge it. Yes? What would you do for live streaming in terms of, like, real-time broadcasting? Uh, well, I'm not really talking about real-time broadcasts because that takes a lot of bandwidth, okay? I'm talking more about Internet TV, which is going the way of mirror player and download. I mean, there is streaming. Before I talked about, think in terms of like five or eight minute chunks, because this way you can cut your video up and then push it out to like uh, YouTube, and it'll be like episode one, chunk one, Chunk two, chunk three, chunk four, and somebody can access it through YouTube, and it'll be the same information and the same stuff that would be on Mural Play, but it would just be in a different format. Yes? You and I were speaking about this earlier, Ira, that probably the best way to explain it to most people is that uh, in order to do any kind of uh, worthwhile broadcast, you normally need a tremendous amount of infrastructure in order to have the outgoing bandwidth so that a whole bunch of users are able to log on. Right. With BitTorrent, right. right. you don't have to worry about it. 
uh, their workstations open, ultimately become the servers. Right, and the client, the client is the server, and the server is the client. Um, there's big problems with, with, with uh, a company called Comcast. Because once you run BitTorrent, you claim you're running a server, and they want to, they have problems with you. They throttle your service on you. Yeah, they can, they can throttle your service on you and create problems with you. This eventually is going to go away because BitTorrent ain't going away, and none of this stuff is going away. So the whole mentality of these companies is going to have to change. Because what's going to happen with people like Comcast is somebody else is going to come off the service that they're not going to do that, and they're going to eat your lunch. Okay, uh, like for instance, Verizon, if you have a cellular card with Verizon, they're going to screw with you if you're going to write BitTorrent. That's why Sprint is doing so well. Actually, Verizon right. and Comcast have decided to the same point. Right. Both companies have walked into this whole idea of the internet blind and they just really realized they were doing things that are innovative, creative. Yes, yes. Amazing. Right. Right, right, exactly. They don't know what the real world is. Uh, a lot of these big, big companies are run by old men who have an old concept that they're trying to hold on to. But it's like trying to push the ocean back with a It's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of bandwidth, yeah. yeah. It can get touched. Right, right. Yeah. So it's a critical, a critical product. Right, but we, yeah, but that's, you're talking like in an office environment. I'm talking about, you know, I'm in my house, and I, and I want to watch TV over the internet. This is the future. Yeah. And they gotta get used to it. This is the way it's gonna be. And there's technology out there like stuff like this, yeah. When people are uploading two gigabyte movies to their computer right. DVD, right. Right. they're choking networks. Right, right. The, uh, but the, it's, it's but this is what forces you know, these people to do better, to create better networks, put more fiber in, put all that stuff out. Uh, cable vision and they I'm more to look like slow dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make look like yeah, but this is why, moves. but this is why a company, you know, Verizon is starting to come around uh, because they're offering FiOS, right? Uh, I don't think it's symmetrical, but it's it's a lot more bandwidth than anything else. Right now. Anyway. It's the fastest you can get anywhere. Yeah, FiOS does. FiOS does. FiOS. Files would run the higher equipment, but not like the functional equipment. Yeah, yeah. And, and not like the business districts. So. Right, right. And I know that for some of the only things I teach to make sure the commerce, yeah. and we're after them. Right, they got to. Well, it was the same thing years ago. They put cable TV in, and they were doing the statement first, that network first. It's the same story all over again. The same thing. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say about BitTorrent. Two comments. Uh, well, first, you know, with the. The ISP is blocking it, like Comcast, etc. Right. There's there's been ways around that for a while. It's like the BitTorrent developers, you can encrypt right. you can, headers you can run it over and, different and encapsulate. You can mask it a little bit. Better. Right. Well, yeah. And uh, but as far as uh, BitTorrent using up so much bandwidth, like a good chunk of the entire internet, yeah. uh, a lot of some internet service providers just try to block it, which right. is not going to work no. because people can encrypt headers and encapsulate, etc. Right. But others uh, recently, just recently, they're trying to be more constructive and uh, improve the protocol. Yeah. So instead of uh, like, uh, you know, downloading from somebody who's able to upload, it looks at, uh, you know, how far away it is, you know, how many hops away it is, right. and things right. like that, which significantly, BitTorrent can be sort of wasteful, yes. by, you know, by yes. transferring data too far away. And right. so there, some of them are being much more constructive, right. and it's right. going to help a oh, lot it's once it's they it's put these changes. It's going to be mm -hmm. people improving BitTorrent, networks improving, it's going to be both I mean, these things if, developing simultaneously. If there's 10,000 people downloading some movie, there's a good chance some of them might be in New York. So right. why am I transferring, you know, to right. Europe and to like, right. and Washington back State? Exactly. Right. Exactly. So exactly. if, if the ISPs would be more, uh, or people in general, if they were constructive, right. we can right. reduce right. the impact of BitTorrent. Absolutely. Well.
Um, yes, you can also limit the in, inbound and outbound bandwidth that it uses. Yes, yes, you can limit your bandwidth. Yes, yes. So that's the other thing with having uh, having BitTorrent and these other uh, rapid download uh, mechanisms in place is that if you do uh, make it more accessible, where you have everybody doing it that way or in interchangeable ways where there's BitTorrent and yeah, thousands yeah. of BitTorrent okay. and they're all interchangeable. The people who are doing these downloads are going to be able to get on off the web pretty fast because if you're looking to go and get uh, some new movie that just uh, popped up someplace on LimeWire or wherever, right. you're able to get on, grab a copy in literally 30 seconds and get off. Right, right. Um, well, we're really going to talk about what's the original content, basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, any other yes. I know you said that his question about real time wasn't within which a presentation, right, but right. is is there open source software for real time? Oh, absolutely. Time? Absolutely. I, absolutely. Yeah. All I ever see is Windows Media. So uh, Dark Ice, Icecast, Ice Ice yeah. Ice yeah. Ice yeah. Ice 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 <laughs> yeah, there you go. Using something like that as we speak, that right there. Thought so. So, uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, but you need the bandwidth to do it. Right. It's an impact for Uh, talk about that. Okay. And uh, well, what time is it? Seven forty-one. Seven forty-one. I'll make yeah, I'm ready for this. It's all for my stomachs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, more questions. Yes, please. Right, I just want to mention, I know Time Warner did a while back that in there, if you have a home service, and if you downloaded more than two gigabytes, they will download, they will, if you look in there, it's very detailed. Uh, you basically the you look. Yeah, they will basically bring you down to 128 kilobits. And their right. point is, is that. Right. The point is, is that like Which is fraud because they're saying unlimited. Well, yeah, but the point is, is 5% of the people are using 90% of the bandwidth. So the issue that, you know, you have a shared, at some point you have a shared medium, and the right. question is, it's not fiber, it's a question of switching capacity. Right, switching so capacity, well, and loop capacity, and all well, that. Well, the point is, is because we have such antiquated, there's people I know in, in, in Scandinavia, 20 bucks a month, 100 megabit pipe, symmetrical. So America's far, far behind the rest of the world. We're way so five, behind. Five percent so of the people are taking them at their work. Japan and Korea, man, they got great systems. They got jobs. Yeah. I thought they're going to raise what we call broadband up to 256K now. I know, I know. Ooh, there you go. Yeah, Israel has tons of fiber in fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Someday. Yeah, yeah. Population yeah. <coughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, which is why people should support net neutrality. Net, right. there you net go. neutrality <laughs> is a good thing. Okay, we can continue this at TGI Fridays. Uh -huh. uh, I'm a little ahead of schedule here, but I'm going to more questions. That's what it's time for. Yes? Is there a repository for open source uh, music MP3 samples or whatever, or Globus or whatever? There is some repositories like that. Yes, there is open repositories for that. Um, Archive.org has a lot, too. Archive.org. Some stuff off of Creative Commons. Magnitudes. That's actually one big record thing called Magnitudes. Yeah, Magnitudes. All Creative Commons. You create the other section of that. No, they have some pay stuff, too. Magnitudes could also be because you can buy something. They split 50-50 with the artist. Right, black, right. You can get multiple formats from Magnitudes. Right. All every album possible. No, no, no. So that's why that's good. We have to find out. Who here has heard Nine Inch Nails? Well, Nine Inch Nails. Radiohead and a couple of bands. Right. These people are putting their music out. You choose the price you want to pay for it. Download. They hate the right. The music industry has abused these people to the point where they're in revolt. They're literally in revolt. Well, they have the money to do it. Exactly. Exactly. They've already made it. Right. Exactly. Some artists have record deals that are non-exclusive, where they can put out stuff on the side. Uh, 
David Bowie has something like that, and I believe Prince has a deal like that. Well, they get so little from the record company. Yeah. They get thousands from their records, right. then they're coming out ahead. Right, right. They're getting, you know, pennies on the dollar for a DVD. dollars per record. Yeah, oh yeah. It's making them more like Oh, it's getting thousands of dollars per record. Yeah, if, if that much. If that much. That's a good deal. That's a good deal. I think that is a good deal. I was going to say, Yeah, it's more like it. That's going to be nice. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you how much I'll find this person. Digital download. Here's the deal. They are looking at the open source community. Give the product away, sell the service. The service is the live performance of music. Yeah. Okay? It's going to be like that too with other things too. Like, um, you know, I can see the day down the road where, you know, theater tickets are going to be a lot of money because it's a live performance. You know, it's already worth seeing it. 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 But that's the service. quality of the work will shame somebody into volunteering to help. Okay, I don't know. So far it hasn't worked. Well, you seem to be doing a good job. I don't know. <laughs> 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 what, what are you using to do?